All right, hello everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a um, Metasploit backdoor binary, um, which will house a payload of a Meterpreter shell. Um, basically, what I'm going to show you is the actual process that's used to make the binary, um, examples of how it can be given to a victim, um, and then how to use the Meterpreter shell. It has comes with a lot of built-in features that a normal standard shell just doesn't have and you would need to work a lot harder to use. Um, so basically I'm going to show you some of the uh, features it has in there. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is actually um, open a Metasploit. And so I'm going to open up this terminal over here and run MSF console. I have the Metasploit uh, directory located in slash opt so I need to run it as root, although it may be different for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up um, uh, Metasploit and I'm going to take the um, payload using MSF payload. I'm going to use Windows slash interpreter slash reverse TCP because what I want is a interpreter shell that runs on Windows and will be connected via a reverse TCP connection. I always find this easiest. Um, so you're going to want to now have to set some um, variables, and so you're going to want to put l host, which is localhost equals, as you can see, I have it on my desktop over here, 192.168.1.107, and that's going to differ for each person. Um, now what we're going to have to do is set the l port, which is the local port that's going to um, that Metasploit is going to open later for us to. Um, listen in for a reverse connection. So we're just going to set the port for port 444. And now what we want to do is we want to um, set it so that it outputs the uh, payload as raw um, information. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to pipe that to MSF encode. And for the slash type, we want exe for executable the encoding scheme we want slash e slash um, x86 slash shikata nai. I find that to be one of the best encoding schemes although I have had a lot of success with context stat um, and so now that I have that we just want to pipe it out to click me dot exe and now what it's going to do is it's executing this and it's going to produce that binary right on the desktop. And as you can see, um, the Shikata Ganai encoding scheme was uh, successful. And now we have the executable right here. So what we can do now is actually put on a flash drive and bring it over to the victim computer. So let's take a look at what's going on over there. So over here we have the ClickMe binary. And what we're going to first do is take a look at it exactly what it is. It doesn't look suspicious at all. So let's open up the properties, see what's in here. Uh, you can see it says for description Apache Bench Command Line Utility. Um, and you can see it's 72 kilobytes. Uh, let's run it and see what happens. As you can see, nothing really major is happening on the desktop. It looks like it just didn't open. So um, something like this really wouldn't raise that much suspicion on the victim's computer. And if you look under Task Manager, you can't really see much of a process that looks suspicious. Um, I mean, granted, this list is pretty populated, but nothing really jumps out at you. So let's go back to the attack computer and see what we can do from there. Alright, so now that we have the binary on the other computer, what we're going to need to do is open up a listener port on here. And so to do that, we're going to use exploit multi handler. And what this is going to do is it's going to handle any incoming connections. So we're going to set payload windows interpreter reverse TCP. And basically we're matching this up with our original with our original um, one. So what we're going to need to do that is um, enter there and now we're going to show options. And so it's going to list the different options that this module has and so you can see you have the exit function which we're really not going to mess with, the L host and the L port. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to um, set the L host and the L port to equal what we need to equal. So we're going to set L host 192.168.1.107 just like we had before on the uh, for the reverse connection on the binary itself. And so now what we're going to do is set L port to write what it was up here, which was port 444. You can see right there. 
All right, so now that we have that, we're going to start um, exploit it and run it as a job. Well, that's what the uh, J option does. So we're going to enter there, and now it says it's starting the reverse payload handler. And now we just got to wait for the uh, the victim to run the file. So I'm going to run over right here and grab it and start the file, and you'll see it actually pop up. So you can see that it's sending stage two, um, which is the actual uh, shell, and it's going to open it up. And as you can see right here, we actually have the session opened up. And so now we're going to press enter to clear the screen. And so to actually start um, talking with this interpreter session, we're going to do sessions-l, which is going to list them. And you can see right here we have a interpreter shell, and there's the um, connection information. You can see that's connected through us through port 1150. And so what I'm going to do is sessions-i, which stands for interactive, 1, which is our first session ID. So now we have our shell open. We can do dir, oh, ls, depending on what you're running. Um, and so what it's going to show is you can see the uh, path that we're at, we're at the desktop. And so now that we have all that, we can start running some of the uh, interpreter goodies. All right, so now we're going to look at some of the um, modules that come with the interpreter. So to start this, we're going to start getting a list of them. So just press Run and double-click Tab. And so it's going to list all the different things that are embedded in it. You have Auto Root, all these things, Desktop Video, which will actually take a video of their desktop. That's not creepy enough. Um, it also enumerate a couple targets like Chrome, Firefox, um, different things, File Collector, Get in the Environment, um, a lot of information collecting things. Um, get countermeasure will actually try shutting off um, their antivirus. Um, an interesting one is, uh, let's see. Yeah, basically they have a lot of things. A uh, run Rickroll I found on the internet will actually open up a Rickroll video on their computer. Scream Spy will take uh, pictures of their desktop for you. Um, service permissions escalate will try to look for. Um, different privilege escalation techniques. Sound recorder will record sound, just what it sounds like. Um, webcam, we'll look at the webcam. These will open up SSH servers on there. Um, and so basically what that's doing is um, it's showing you the different things that are on there. So what I'm going to show you is run get keylogger. Uh, what was it? Uh, where was that? Key log recorder. There it is. It's migrating the process, and now it's recording all the keystrokes. Uh, it's as simple as that. So, yeah, interpreter is actually a pretty scary thing. Uh, makes everything so easy. You don't really need to have any skills necessary to use it. But um, I hope you learned a little bit. Uh, make sure you're careful when you're opening up um, random binary files you find because you never know when you have a interpreter backdoor encoded into one. So thanks for watching and I uh, hope you learned a little bit.